Okay, uh, it's Steve Mills here. Uh, welcome to this, my second podcast. Uh, this podcast called Steve Mills on Success in Table Tennis. And I'm just so excited to be here with uh, a gentleman that if you're you know, know anything about table tennis, whose name uh, will be very, very familiar. I'm here with Des Douglas, the Des Douglas, Desmond Douglas, uh, who, you know, back in my day when I played, he was like just head and shoulders better than anybody in the business. And it's great to have you here, Des. Thank you ever so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, so, um, just to tell people a little bit about what we're trying to do, Des, and uh, one thing I would say uh, uh, about you as well as thanking you for being here is when I, I asked you, Des to be here on the uh, podcast, I said I said to him, look, you know, this is not about me trying to make money or, you know, trying to promote myself in any way. This is just purely about how us us oldies, the, the guys who've been there and done it and played and tried our best for many, many years, can can really try and help uh, some of the younger players. Because we, we both said when we spoke and we're talking about doing this that, you know, it, it's not just about, uh, you know, hard work, but we also said, you know, it, it, it's really about... Um, you know, uh, uh, having having goals and aims and 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 and, f- and being being very very focused, but also um, you know we we said, isn't it a shame that we didn't know back then what we know now? And I think probably our parents said that when they were you know uh, been around for a while. And I think it's so true, you know that, that you know knowledge is is absolutely incredible. And, uh, you know, I'm sure if you did know what you know now and I did and we could, you know, just trans, you know, uh, transport ourselves back to being 18 again, we'd have probably been even better uh, players. But I'm not sure where you could have been much better because you were pretty much an amazing player anyway. So um, let me just tell you a little, let me just get, go through the facts, if I may, Des, uh, about you. Uh, certainly some that I know and then we'll kick off uh, off properly. So. Desmond Douglas, uh, 11 times English champion. I mean, that in itself shows consistently, uh, you know, uh, that one of the great things I think about you, Des, is you manage to perform at a very, very high level, incredibly consistently, which is, is really difficult to do. I was much more up and down. You know, I could occasionally beat some of the top players, but I could also lose to somebody ranked, I don't know, 50 in England or something. Uh, World number seven, you know, absolutely fantastic. And and pretty much, again, for, I don't know, 10, 12 years, you were in the top, you know, top 10, top 15, maybe, um, uh, for virtually all that time, I think. European number three, Olympian, which I think is a great title, a great, great thing to be able to say. I know you played for eight years um, in the Bundesliga in Germany, which is, you know, arguably the the world's strongest league. And, uh, you know, you had a, just an unprecedentedly good uh, record in that. Uh, and one of the best things I think that, you know, I remember you doing, Des, was winning the European Top 12. That's such a, a difficult tournament to win because you've got to play against everybody. Everybody, uh, you know, all the top players... Uh, in Europe, and uh, it's a round robin, and, and you, you won that. You also got an MBE, which is pretty cool. Um, and and now uh, you're you're doing a lot of coaching and trying to help uh, help youngsters. So uh, that's that's the introduction over with. As I said, it, it's great. I'm really excited to uh, to have you here, and thank you again uh, for being here. So let, let's just kick off Des by, um, just, just telling people a little bit about you and you now, what, what are you doing right now? Um, I tend to sort of, uh, do quite a bit of coaching at a Woodfield table tennis club in, uh, Wolverhampton. Okay. Uh, it's not a, a big club, but, um, it's more like a family sort of orientated. Fantastic. And, uh, there's about five, six tables and, uh, okay. I just try to help the youngsters there. Oh, good for you. Practice. Um, one of them, Charlotte Bartley, she's probably now in Germany, practicing in Germany. Okay. Uh, Megan Jones, Dan Jones. Uh, those are a few people uh, who I help. But uh, yes, when it opens again, hopefully uh, after the, the lockdown, we can sort of get back and try to 
you know, find where we left off. Yeah, it's, it's been really tough, hasn't it? I know myself, you know, I've got tried to get back into playing and uh, uh, I was all set to play in the World Championships at veterans level, obviously. Um, and then it all got cancelled. I spent 18 months practising and then they cancelled it. So uh, I think it was probably a good job, to be honest, Des, because I was nowhere near good enough. So at least it's given me another couple of years to try and uh, to try and improve. So one of the things that I wanted to ask you, Des, is, you know, you, you've got vast amount of experience, uh, uh, you know, over many, many years. If, if you were now talking to a, a, a young, top, up-and-coming up junior player or cadet or, you know, anybody who's, who's got ambitions to go from where they are right now uh, to make significant improvements, what, what would you tell them? What advice could you give them? Well, the, the first thing, you, you have to sort of enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. And then hopefully, uh, you know, you, you're working hard, you're playing hard, putting the hours in, that's important, and enjoying it. Yeah, and and you find as you start to get better, that's when a, a little bit more pressure comes along, and I think that's when you start sort of setting yourself goals. Yes, because uh, you think, yeah, I've just won the club tournament, maybe I've just won the county, and then from there a, a national tournament, and then that's when you start to think, yes, maybe I'm not such a bad player. Yeah, My goals are starting to improve now because I'm. I'm starting to win events. Yeah. Because when you start to win, that's when you start to sort of have little little ambitions. Yeah. And you take it from there. Yeah, yeah. When you started off, did were you someone who like, you know, thought, right, I'm you know, this is my goal, this is what I'm gonna try and do and uh, or were you were you just sort of thought right, you know, I'll get as good as I can and see how it goes and as you said yes. that was you, was it? Yeah, right, I'm okay. As good as I can in yes. school well, at school, I was better at football and cricket. Were you really? Yes, it was my third sport. <laughs> okay. So, it's a good job you didn't play time. that then. <laughs> You'd have been seriously good. Probably a lot richer as well, Des. <laughs> uh, yeah, I tended to play in the dinner times, you know. Yeah, yeah. At school. And then later on, uh, when I finished work, I'd go down to the Central YMCA. Okay. And then, you know, playing on the end table because we weren't so good. In uh-huh. those days, you had probably Derek Munn, Paul George. Yeah, Alfred, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, great you know, names. Yeah. Plays, you see, so yeah. we looked up to those guys. Yeah. But gradually, I started to get better. Yeah. And eventually, I'd get to the center table or the top table. Yeah. And the YM. Then I know I sort of... You've I'm made it. <laughs> meet with the club boys. Yeah. It took me a long time. Yeah. Um, in my days, you, you know, you had these proficiency awards, gold, silver, and bronze, and you had to do different... Uh, Different things to achieve those things. Do you know, I, I remember that bronze. I, I I couldn't love. I couldn't chop. I've always a waste of time doing sort of things. <laughs> what I wanted to do was to get the bronze, so yeah. I had this bronze badge, and I was happy. But the gold and the silver, I wasn't interested because there was other proficiency tests which I've been thinking. Why do I need to do that? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I was just happy with what I had. Well, do you know I, when I first started, I went on holiday to Butlins, and you'll never guess who was uh, the coach there. None other than Alan Fletcher. Uh, <laughs> and I passed my, my Helix Bronze Award with, with Alan Fletcher and became Boy of the Week. And for me, Des, it was the first thing I'd ever won. I'd never won anything. I was useless at every sport. You could, I couldn't get in the football team, the cricket team. I was useless. But just picked up a table tennis bat and I could sort of do it. You know, yeah. uh, obviously not to your level, but, you know, I, I, I found it... Just it was the thing that I could do. Perhaps if I'd played tennis, I might have uh, uh, been good at that too. Because well, it's, it's later similar. On, Alan Fletcher did come when um, I think it was in between university. I think one period for about a month, we played nearly every day at the YMCA. Right. And yeah, he changed to a long pimples on the backhand. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. We practice a hell of a lot. Yeah. Of fantastic. YMCA. Fantastic. So, yeah. Now, one thing you said a few minutes ago, you said you said it's really important to put in the time. Yes. So what, what does that mean? Give me the numbers. How, how many hours did well, you used to you practice? Got to try to practice as much as you can. I'm, I mean, when I had a, a full-time job, you, you're working eight hours. Yeah. You've got to go home and get something to Yeah, eat. yeah, yeah. Then you, you try to go down to the YMCA, and depending how long it's open. Yeah. You just try to just practice as, as much as you can. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you, you've got to put the hours in to have a chance. Yeah. Because I, I feel when I got better, uh, the you knew on the circuit, if the people were going to work, college or university, they weren't putting the hours in as the guys 
like myself who tried yeah, to yeah, yeah. play full time. Yeah. So we had a slight advantage all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're going to win. No. But we just thought because we're putting the hours in, we had that slight edge. Yes. If you notice, nearly all the tournaments, it was always the same four, more or less the same four. Yeah. You know, the semis and finals. Yeah. Those were the guys who were really who were trying to play full time. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the semis or the, the part time or the social players were like, last 16 yeah 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 no you're, you're, you're absolutely right eight. yeah yeah um so you've got to start off by putting the working and also to play against a good pra practice player or a good partner yeah that's important yes um you know to, to, to push each other yeah yeah I, I i think a couple of things that i did is i, I put in the effort to travel virtually every day from Sheffield to Manchester to go and play with Nigel Eckersley, John Hilton, Dave Constance, people like that. Because so I'd just become the best in Sheffield by, you know, a reasonable amount. You know, I was like ranked, I don't know, 15 in England, something like that at the time. And so, it, you know, uh, doing that. And I suppose with you going, going to Germany and, and yeah. playing, uh, you know, the, with, with the players in your team and against the, the top um, standard in the world has uh, got to, got to really uh, really help. Um, so I didn't have much. Once once I got to a certain level in England, I didn't have too much choice because if I wanted to get better, I had to get out. Yes, yeah. I, I couldn't get any better where I was. No, no, um, no. So I, I had to make a decision. I'd yeah. Carry on working and playing part time. Yeah. Or look, quit quit work, take a chance. Yeah, and go and play full time somewhere else. I think if you look back at you know when when I mean we you were a couple of years older than me, but not a great deal. We we played at the same time, uh, more or less. Uh, although you appear, you know, you were like when I was fourteen, you were like I don't know eighteen something like that, and you were already a you know a world class player, and. Uh, uh, but but you look back then and, and pretty much all the players who were in like say the top 10 were all full time and then other players who weren't maybe quite as you know as, as good uh, because they didn't they didn't put the hours in uh, as you said so that's uh, in incredibly important what about on the physical side des did you uh, I, I'm not sure what, what... <laughs> I wasn't afraid. No, no, I didn't think you were. <laughs> you weren't that into the, the, the sort of, you know, pounding out the running and stuff, were you? No. I, I prefer to do things that suited me. The yeah. Sprints, the sharp bursts, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. You know, I just want to be the quickest the quickest person out there. Oh, you were. You were, you, you were like that. Like, I wasn't too much on the long distance. No, no. I did it, but it, but it, it wasn't really around my sort of training schedule. It, mine was just... Pretty simple, really. Yeah. Just general fitness. Yeah, yeah. You know the sprints. When I yeah. Was camps. I was put through the paces. You know, people like uh, Ben Simpson, Don, yeah. Ben Byrne. And so I did what I had to do. Yeah. But I still wanted to do things that suited me. Yeah. My game. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so I'm not going to, you know, go back and lob and chop and all that. that no, no, no. That's alien no. to me. Yeah. I've got to be at the table. I've got to be at the controller. I've got to be making people running around, looking for the angles, looking for the gaps. That's my sort of uh, way of playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, you had a, 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 a very, if I may say, a very, like, simple way of, you know, you, yes. you, you took the game and you actually made it, you know, you did things, as I said, incredibly consistently, but also an incredible high level and an incredible speed. You know, you, there, there weren't many players. Now, I'm going, I'm going to be a slightly big editor here and include me as one of the real fast reaction players. Just you and I, we, we had different styles, but we played in the same way, both close to the table, hitting it fast and hard, pretty much. And... Uh, um, you know, well, I must uh, tell the viewers as well, Steve. At the English clubs one year, I did get a beating one game off you. Very you did. <laughs> and, uh, what was the score, Des? I can't remember. It, it was on the tenth, and it was a very bad beating. So I had to get it out of my head because you were on fire in that one game. You've never forgiven me, have you? Really, you know. Uh, you know, just get on with the game, thinking Steve's won that one. Yes. Yes. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, it, 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 it was a weird experience. I did beat Des in, in. I think I'd lost the first, and then beat him like as he says, really, really easy in a game. And uh, it was uh, it was a interesting psychology there. I think because I'm sure you agreed. Most of the game is all about the, the the you know it's all in the head what you believe. You know, I'd just beaten one of the best players 
guys in the world like ridiculously easy, you know, <laughs> in a way, a, 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 a you know, totally ridiculous score. And uh, and then when you go back to the table, you know, the, the mentality is very different. You're thinking different things. I'm thinking, you know, uh, I've got a chance and, 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 uh, and then you got in front. And it, 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 it's all, of, you know, I, I do think a lot of it is, is up there, don't you, Des? Yeah, yeah. and also we didn't have a psychologist. So this is where no. you've got to be strong in your mind. Yeah, when yeah, you, yeah. You, you have the momentum. You've given me such a bad beating. You've got the momentum. Yeah, now yeah. I've got to take that momentum yeah, yeah. back to me. Yes. And that's where it's very, very difficult. It is. You it see, is. Um, after having such a, a bad beating. Yeah. So that's why I said you've got to put it, put it to one side, start again, and think it's it's love all again. Yes. And then, and then start again with the battle. That, that's great, uh, that's, great that's advice, I think. As far as the speed goes, there wasn't many people who played over the table, maybe myself. You, Dennis Neal. Yeah. Most people played a little bit way off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was, as I said, I, I played everything very simple. Yeah. Um, but it, it was the way I played, and it suited my style. I, I knew what to, what I wanted to do, and I, I knew how I wanted to win the points. Um, it just depends if you could stop me from doing it to make it difficult. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I kept everything very, very simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you had a, a great, great way of playing. How do you, and I, I'm not even sure, you, you know, I don't think I know the answer to this, but I, I'd love to hear your your thoughts. How do you develop that sort of speed, the reactions? How do you do that? Is, is that just year, years and years of doing it, playing so close to the table? Because you were like... Unbelievably fast. It's my style, but, but, but when I started, as I said, it was in the classroom. The, the, the table was on top of the desks because we didn't have no legs. Uh-huh. So the blackboard is behind me, nowhere to run. Yeah. So my whole philosophy was to stay close to the table. Yeah, yeah. Make the other guys run around. Yeah, yeah. And I, I also remember coming and practicing with you. I don't really remember this, but it was in Birmingham. I can't remember where. Uh, but I came down for the day and we played in this um, uh, place where the, the, there was hardly any run back compared with normal. Uh, and and the, the table and the conditions were like lightning fast. Yes, yes. And uh, I, I thought, I remember thinking to myself then, well, there's no wonder Des plays the way he does. You literally cannot play any other, you know, you couldn't go back and defend really in, in that facility. Well, the, the, the facility. Downside is, Steve, when you play in a big hall, it's very slow. Yes, and yeah. The guys there, and they've got so much room, they slow yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, in some ways, there's an advantage. It, there's the big halls, then I've got to work my socks off. Yeah, yeah. Well, in yeah, Germany, it, the, in Germany, the conditions, certainly when I played there, were much slower. They had the, yes. the sort of soft, spongy, sports hall floors, whereas we had, like, you know, basically uh, solid cement floors, didn't we, or wooden right. floors or something, which were, were very, very different, I felt, uh, over... The, over um, That's what I found in Germany. It was very slow. Yeah, very you slow. Said, once I got used to it... It, it suited me in a way because they were so far away. It was hard to hit the ball past me. Yeah, right, right. So I had to play a little bit, little bit of a cat and mouse. Yeah. Bring them in a little bit. Yeah. And then I could sort of uh, speed it up, and they didn't have time to run back. Yeah, yeah, right, right, so, okay. Uh, but in a big hall, it's always slow. It's always slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So if if you were you know looking back on your career and uh, you know you now teleported back in time to a point where you're, you know, you're a young man, let's say, you're 17, 18. What, what would you do different, Des? That, that, you know, I mean, you, you, you were like, you know, almost, you know, I mean, you were so close to being like the world champion, I, I, I felt, you know. I know they were the Chinese there. I started there, but late, Steve. I started, you started late. late, right, okay. Yeah, and, and, and the problem was also that uh, finding somebody very, very good in that environment. You know, when I started Ormsby, it was Ormsby, Dennis, this Neil, yeah. Joe Taylor, Nick yeah. Charles, Jim yeah, yeah. Walker. They had that environment where they could play every day. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, and I they were all together, weren't they? Yes, I didn't. And that's why I said I started late. I was working for five or six years. So while I'm doing that, these guys are playing every day. Yeah. So I'm trying to catch up. Yeah. Um, and when I, when I first won the English clothes, I was still at work. Well, yeah. So, so wow. I, it's it's funny really because these guys are playing every day. I'm at work and I'm believing these guys were playing every day. Yeah. Um, which is that shouldn't happen. 
Not, not should, really. No, no, no. no. Because they're putting Testament. the hours in. Mm-hmm. I'm putting the hours in at work. Yeah. Um, but I realised then I had to, uh, you know, take the chance to play full time, and then get into that environment. Mm-hmm. Where I could play all these players. That's yeah. the level. Yeah. So all the time you're playing at a high level. Yeah. Now, I think playing abroad helped me a hell of a lot. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I remember. Get any better in England? I couldn't get any better. Yeah, yeah. I remember a uh, s- similar thing. You know, I'd, I got a job working for British Steel, being from Sheffield. And one day I decided that, you know, that was it. I was going to be a, a full-time professional table tennis player. Uh, I, I got home from work and told my dad I'd resigned. And uh, I tell you, you do not want to know how much trouble I was in that day. Because uh, I was about county standard at the time. You know, I was nowhere. I was a long way off that. But uh, so it, 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 it's... Uh, a, a step that I think probably you have to take. So, um, uh, what about the coaching side, Des? You know, um, I, I look back and I was talking to Don Parker the other day, and he, Don, by the way, for those who don't know, was like top top four or five in England, became England national coach, and so on and so forth. And Don said, you know, do you know what we did really well with the the level of coaching that we had? Um, what was the you know, did did you get great coaching? Was it was that a, a, a real yeah, asset to you? In, in some ways, because Don had been a good player, it yeah, it's easier, yeah, because he could relate, yes, to the problems you were having, yeah, yeah. So, so, so one, whatever he told you, it was easy to relate, and you yes. had to try to do it, yes. If if um, if the coaches you had hadn't really played at that level, yeah, it was a bit more difficult for them, yeah, yeah. Um, really, it's not we're just reading the coaching book and getting your batch. No, you know, no, sometimes no. you've got to actually go out and do it, it uh, yeah. and uh, feel what I'm feeling. Yeah. And uh, and sometimes it's a little bit like a psychologist, psychologist. They'll read all these books and they'll tell you all these things, what you should be doing. But I've, I've never seen a psychologist go out and do it themselves. No, no. It's, you know, it's, 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 so yeah. you, you, you've got to do it. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Whatever advice you're, you're getting, yeah, yeah. you've got to go out and do it and perform. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, that's pretty hard. But, yeah, the coaches... Um, Sometimes you know what you've got to do. Yes. Because you're playing these guys so often. Yeah. It depends if they're going to let you do it. Yeah. If they don't let you do it, then it becomes a battle. Yeah. And it becomes more of a, a, of, of up here, here. what you believe. Yeah, yeah. To sort of uh, dominate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The coach is on the advisory. That, I think you know you look you look back again and uh, you know you, you and I could name probably half a dozen players that played in, in, in our time, maybe maybe world class or, or you know, top players in the UK, who when it got to like juice, juice in the third, you had a pretty good feeling that that guy was the, going to be the guy that won. They won more of those close games. And you were definitely one of those. You know, you, you there, there were several, I, I looked, looked over the years, you know, and there were several British players that had you on the rack, you know, yes, you, yes. you know, they were r- yes. like that far away from beating you, and you were yeah. like an amazing win. You know, nobody, I don't think, while while I played uh, at all, actually, nobody ever beat you. I don't think you ever lost to a, 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 an English player. That that I certainly when I played, um, yeah. Yeah. as I say, I was a few years younger than you, so. Um, you know, I probably missed the, you know, as you were coming up. But when you were number one, I, I, I don't think so. Did you? Or am I wrong? I think, I think Alan beat me for, I think before Alan, it was probably Dave Hanna. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, I, I but that, I think that was after, I was gone then, Des. I, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd already packed in. I heard that, I heard that Dave Hanna was the first guy yeah. to beat you, so. I thought when but for I a long out, time. I felt I was so much under so much pressure, pressure I'd never, ever felt. Right. Because, um... It was ten times in a row, so that was a tenth consecutive final. Right. It had never, it never been done. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd never experienced that sort of. No, pressure. no, no. Um, and it was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, Alan played well, and he, you know, he deserved to win. Yeah. But I think after I'd lost that, I felt a relief. Yeah, I yeah, felt yeah. Everything. It yeah. was just a relief. Yeah. And and then the next time when I won it, uh, I came back and won. I think the next year or two years later. And as I said, it, it wasn't the same sort of pressure. No, no, no. Um, to go through so so many wins consecutively, it's a it's a terrible burden. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's it also, just builds and builds, mo- doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. How to mm-hmm. motivate yourself? Yeah. The next one. The yeah, next yeah. One. You've got to keep having goals. 
Yeah. That, that's very, very difficult to do. It is, um, it is. Once, twice. But when you keep on doing that, you're just building more and more pressure off yourself. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, even sometimes when I look back, I don't know how I did it. It's just, um, <laughs> just playing. Just playing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that was it. But, uh, but yeah, it's knowing how to handle the pressure. Yes. You know, when you finish, knowing to say, yeah, that's it now. Let's go and chill out somewhere, watch yeah. TV. It, it, or something. Yeah, it's it's almost it's like a swig, it's almost like a swigometer, isn't it, Des? You know, you, you you get to a level where you know you're getting you know the the game's going on, and you're getting a little bit more nervous, a little bit more. If you just tip over, it goes. You know, your standard goes down, but keeping it at that high level is is really really important. Where you you know you're motivated, you're totally focused, but you're not you've not gone over uh, to a level where you know, you start thinking about, you know, what happens yes. if I miss this? It's the old saying, yes, isn't yes. it? You know, if you if you think, you know, I'm, I'm just about to play play against you, it's 19 all in the third, and I'm thinking, don't serve in the net, Steve. Whatever yes. you do, don't serve in the net. What happens? <laughs> you serve in the net, don't you, you know? As, as I said, you didn't have a psychologist. Yeah, You've got to yeah, do it yourself. Uh, absolutely, oh. absolutely. And, and um, this, this, this brain in here... Yeah get gives you what you're thinking about so if i'm thinking about not serving in the net the 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 brain just hears serving in the net (laughs) you you, you sort of go ahead and do it not always but sometimes i'm I'm thinking just to serve short and tight yeah 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 because i'm thinking if i serve short and tight you can't hurt me no no yeah yeah well you did that you you made a living doing that so if i kept it simple like that yeah 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 i'm thinking in the then you put the service starts with the service. You put the service in. Then the, if you serve well, the rally begins. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing I've been championing in, uh, in table tennis, um, uh, just like your opinion on it, really. You know, in the world of tennis, uh, yeah. you, you can watch uh, uh, Roger Federer play, and they'll say uh, things like, "So, uh, so far this year, uh, Federer's hitting sixty-eight percent of his second serves in." And uh, he's won 48% of uh, the rallies on his second serve. Now, that, that's like, oh, wow, how did they know that stuff? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that is such a, you know, if, if I looked at the game now and, you know, I'm, I'm less involved with it than, than you are and others, that was something that, would, you know, you and I, I don't think ever knew. I, I, so, you know, I couldn't tell you how many points I won with my backhand or my forehand or, or which, which serve, you know, if I get to juice, then which serve converts more or, you know, I no idea at all, really. I, I, uh, I think that's what information is for the statisticians. Yeah. When we're playing, we're trying to get the serve in. We're trying to win the point. Yeah, yeah. And we're trying to find the easiest way. And as long as we were winning... We that that that's all we did. We'll continue. Yeah, yeah. We won't say we, you know forty eight percent here or how many backhands you hit. We know we know what we've got to do, and we just get on with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Too much information. Obviously. Well, you could be right, but I just wonder whether you know the the, the modern players of today uh, in in the world of table tennis. And uh, I don't know whether that would be a be a pain in the neck or a, a, a benefit to know that yeah. you know when when Liam Pitchford opens up with his backhand. He wins forty eight percent, but if he gets his forehand in, it's as high as seventy percent, and therefore he needs to focus on that more. Uh, but if you don't know those sort of stats, I, I, I think you tend to do what you're good at. Yes, you yeah. tend to do what you're good at. Yeah, you that, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You try to try to stop the opponent. Yeah. From, from stopping you from doing that. Yeah, yeah. That's the way I, I see it. I don't really see it. Uh, I try to make it very simple. Okay. Um, I once went on a coaching course and the, and the guy said to me, don't you ever think how many revolutions is on the ball when they chop it? I says, why, why do I want to know how many revolutions? I just want to know if it's chop or flood. Yeah. <laughs> just, just hit the ball over the net. Yeah. So I'm not interested yeah. in all this whatever. I just no, want to know no, what right, spins right. on it yeah. and have the, the back angle accordingly and get the ball back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I say, keep it, keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's really cool. So I don't want to take too much more of your time. So, you know, as I said, really appreciate it. It's been great talking to you. Um, just a, a, a final final thing I'm going to ask you. What, what are the th- three tips? If you, if you had to say three things for a youngster to, to really focus on to get to that next level and beyond, what, what would they be, Des? I would say that the first thing you've got to do is enjoy it. 
Yeah. Uh, give it your give it your best shot. Give it a hundred yeah. percent. And as long as you're giving it your hundred percent, you you cannot do any better. You're, mm-hmm. giving, it, you're giving it your best. Hopefully, you'll get the results. Yeah. And also, don't set your goals too high. Okay. So, so if, you, if you have a setback, it isn't a, a disaster. Right. Uh, it's just a little setback. It's just a blip. Yeah. Don't set the goals too high. And, and just try to do everything gradually. Bit okay. By bit. Don't think, oh, yes, I want to be world champion because so-and-so was world champion. It doesn't work like that. No. Everything no. has to be very gradual. Um, but those are the things I would say, you know, try to enjoy it. Yeah. Give it your best shot. And... and um, don't uh, set your goals to, to so, high. So, so enjoy, um, enjoy what you do. Do your absolute best and yes. don't set your goals too high. And I, I suppose I'd add to that, you know, set some, you know, what are, you, what are your goals for this month? You know, yes. uh, what, are you, what are you trying to achieve in terms of what you want to practice, how much you want to play? You know, if you've got tournaments and things, you know, my, my goal is to go to this tournament and ideally, you know, if, if you're in the mar- in the, the potential to win it or to get, you know, I've never got through to the third round, so my aim is yeah. to get through to the yeah. quarterfinal right. or something like that, yeah. yeah. You, you, you've got to start, you know, a club level, county level, tournament level, you, you know, like that's it. So you, you, you're building, you've got to base your building. Yeah. But rather than thinking I've picked up a bat, now I'm going to be the best I've ever. Yeah, been. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. You know, I know how hard it was for me. Uh, I started late, as I said. Yes. I, I hardly played cadets. Right. Uh, I played two years in the juniors. Yeah. Came out, and uh, you know, I, I progressed. So, as I said, if I can do it at such a late stage, yeah, other people can do it, and yeah, uh, but they can start a little bit earlier than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 now, I always, always said I wasn't the best. I think there's other people who had more ability than me, but they did, didn't continue to do the job. No. Um, you know, it just I, I persevered. Yeah. I think if they persevered, they could have got the results. I, I remember years ago, Des, listening to uh, an interview with Ivan Lendl, and uh, some you know the tennis player, and uh, somebody asked him. Um, what was the difference between you, Ivan? You know, you managed to be world number one, stayed there longer than anybody at the time ever had before Federer and uh, Nadal and so on. And, uh, you know, what made you the best player probably that's ever been? It's, was it your forehand? And he said, no, he said, it was nothing to do with my shots. So it came down to one thing. He said, every day I do far more than anybody else could possibly expect. He said, I didn't compete with the others. I competed with the best I could possibly be, uh, and uh, you know, uh, that, uh, I think that's that a good yeah, yeah, it, it, it is, a it is, philosophy. yeah, yeah. And, and not every player has got that, you see. No, um, some people are unbelievably gifted but don't want to work. Yeah, and then other other people aren't so gifted but it works at some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and everybody has a gift. Uh, it just depends what it is, and you've got to make the best of it. But, but as you said, you have to work. You have if you don't put the work. There's in, no there's work. there's no way around it, is there? You've no, got to. No, you've sure. just got to. Yeah. Again, another guy you, you'll be aware of, uh, Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the actor. I remember listening to him saying that, that he said, "I'm not the best actor in the world." He said, "I'm you know I'm not the best singer in the world. I'm not the best dancer in the world." He said, "But if you and I get on a tre- treadmill, there's only two possible outcomes he said one i'm gonna die <laughs> two you're gonna stop <laughs> you're gonna give in he said that that's the only two things that could possibly happen <laughs> that really made me laugh and uh you know just his sheer dedication got him yes. uh, where where he he was and uh whatever you, you know, do whatever walks of life yeah you, absolutely you know, if you want to get to be the best then you've got to you got to Put in the hours, put in the hours. Yeah, that's your, so, that's so that's the message. That's that's a culmination of it all, Des. Thank you ever so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Okay. You know, you you've been. Uh, I think uh, you know. Uh, in in my life, I just like to say you've been a great champion. You really have. Okay. You've been a great role model uh, uh, to people like me coming up. And uh, um, you know, uh, it, you were also a great target to try and hit. I think you know because you. <laughs> You know, we had to try and beat you, but we never quite managed to. But thank you ever so much for being here. And um, I hope uh, for everybody watching that you've taken something out of this. 
and uh, you raise your own game and uh, achieve your best, as Des said. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Steve.